Hey everybody, this is Eric Clark's Travel Videos and I'm here at the Territory of Terror. So this is the third largest concentration camp in all of Europe and this is in Lviv. Um, and I just did a memorial over there that said that 36,000 um, or more uh, people died here in this Jewish ghetto. But this is the concentration camp, third largest in all of Europe. So we've done Warsaw, we've done Krakow, we've done uh, all of those, but uh, um, let's go take a look. Bye everybody. So out front here, so this is the concentration camp. Let me just show you the gate so you can see what it says. Um, is that backwards? Tep, tep and top, R, tep, topi, whatever, I don't know. Um, I'll show you the front sign here too. And then I can't read it. Part of it is the Memorial Museum of Totalitarian Regime, Territory of Terror. Um, and this is what it says for, I mean, there's not a lot in English. Cost of buying a ticket is 60. Uh, free admissions for orphan children to pie of parents. Okay, cost of excursion. Rules, only cashless payment, okay. And so I guess this is where you enter here. Uh, and there's barracks one and barracks two um, in the camp, so. But out front here, it opens at 10 o'clock. Um, there's memorials here, um, and quite a few of them. Let's go take a look at a couple of them. <sighs> um, well, and none of that is English. Uh, none of that is English either. <laughs> you know, we need English people. And that's not English either. Okay, well, maybe none of these are going to be in English. But actually, I read one, so I don't know why. So this person here, to be frank, before the war, I thought of him as a bad, harsh person, but he transformed into an angel. I could not believe he had such a noble nature and that it was the same person from the memories of Figa Fink. One of the England a shoemaker. Um, That's the building, I guess. The building is known as the Krakmala the Town Home. It received its final appearance on the verge of the 19th, 20th century. Solid shoe factory was opened. Solid future. It resulted into salvation of at least 150 Jews who managed to survive the Holocaust. Here, they, they were hiding from former Jewish workers with their families. Some of them were sent further to other places. Others stayed in the basement of the factory until the end of the Nazi occupation. Huh. So it's like a Schindler's List type building, huh? Born in Sriga Rosen, she was married to Abraham Fink and moved to Lviv here. Her husband was a shoemaker. She had two daughters, Anna and Bella, all of family. Stayed. Fiege and Abram Fink stayed in the solid basement until the day Germans left Lviv. Eek. Oop, there's one over here too. This must be Mr. Fink, no? Doctor out of the prisoner of war. Germans took them to shooting. Uh, 
ahead in the infirmary. As soon as the Germans arrived in several months, they established a ghetto for the Jews. It was a, a street, blah, 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 blah. It was locked in with high fences and walls, barbed wires. It was the ghetto for the Jews. When the, yeah. And this is how big the complex was. Remember Krakow, how big that one was? H. Public execution. Officially announced the, about the ghetto is in operation. 1941. About 60,000 Jews were settled to the ghetto allocated districts in here. That is why about 20 Jews stayed in temporary living area. Forty-two thousand went to Belzic. Hmm. It's a big place. buildings. I know that they were redoing the Jewish church downtown. In addition to the mass killing of the Jews, the period of the Nazi occupation in Lviv is also marked by the process of destruction of the Jews' spiritual and material heritage, such as the Jewish temple, the synagogues. Out of the 35 Lviv synagogues, only four survived. Some of the most known Lviv-based synagogues ruined by the Nazis are Golden Gate Synagogue. That's the one we went to yesterday as a memorial for that one. Um, Baroque elements, the constructions were, were, were completed in 1582, the synagogue, the great city synagogue, the synagogue of uh, progressist, the old cemetery synagogue. Hmm. I'm not afraid of anyone's death any longer, neither of my own but I could not come to terms with it in any possible way. I wanted to live very much, and I felt something was screaming inside myself, live, live. I was not able to silence it and could not set my heart at rest. Jessica has his family, Polish speaking, choose her mother. Through the eyes of the 12-year-old girl, Holocaust she experienced in 1959, left Israel. For me, it was the happiest day of my life. Firstly, my beloved man was alive. Secondly, I saved lives of three women Miss Frag and her daughters, I am all sore and sick already. Germans took away my good health, but I did survive against all odds. Well, um, it's amazing how far reaching the 
Hitler reach actually extended. I mean, it's just maddening. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna wait and then go in when it opens, bye. All right, everybody. This is what um, a Nazi prisoner of war, um, a Jewish settler or somebody that was captured or taken here would see. So this is the gate, the walk-in gate, and you can see the train tracks right there. And so if they came in by train car, that's what they'd see. Um, and this is what it says above the gate. Um, and I doubt this, this door was here, it might have been, I don't have any idea, but I forgot to get to this side and show you. So this is what the, the person would experience. And so the complex is pretty big. Um, these are the, the chambers. I mean, there were 36,000 people here at one time, third largest in Europe, and at least that's what I read. Um, and those are the train tracks. And they, you know, obviously they probably fixed things or you know, um, there probably weren't cobble streets. There were probably, you know, bricks or, or dirt or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, here's what it says. So this says museum plan about the museum. And so here's where you enter. You come in here. And then this is where the staff, railway, carriage, um, barracks one is down here, barracks two is down here. Um, and this shows you how big the place was. So this is called the ghetto, I guess. And this is the territory of terror. It does say that right there, doesn't it? Yes. Territory of terror. Um, and so this is how big it was. In 1991, Nazi occupation um, declared that the start of forceful isolation of Jews, Lviv citizens in November, December, about 60,000 of them were forced to move into the district of Kleparev, transformed into the ghetto, which was the third largest ghetto occupation in occupied Europe. So that's the third largest. In front of the bridge, sorry, there's a bug. In front of the Bridge of Death, ugh, they selected those who appeared unable to work the old, the ill, and executed them, at least 3,000 persons. The first stage of displacement was interrupted due to the epidemic of typhoid. Thus, about 20,000 Jews stayed in temporary living area. Okay. But this shows you how big it was. So I think this is the entrance, and so you can see that these, this is where I think I'm at. I came in here by the railroad tracks, right? Um, and then, so these are the barracks now. And then, so this was all fenced in at one point. So just like in Krakow, um, there were, you know, walled areas. You couldn't get out. You had to have a... That's the new train. Well, that's obnoxious. So I think from here they had, at least in Krakow, and I don't know if they're gonna give a tour here or what this is, but in Krakow you could leave, but you had to have an armband. And, and so a yellow armband or some kind of band that would get you out of the complex and back in the complex. If they found you outside the complex without a band, you were in trouble. If you tried to leave without an armband, you were in trouble. Um, so it was pretty crazy. Um, 
and that's what the barracks all looked like and it was just wall-to-wall -wall people i am sure transit prison number 25 transit prison number 25. was established in 1944 the soviet religion before transportation to the correctional labor camps of gulag Ugh. Um, and forced settlements. The inmates from the Western Ukraine prisons were brought here. According to establishment norms, the transit prison could only keep 2,100 persons at a time. Anti-sanitary conditions, malnutrition, and inadequate. Okay. So this is the concentration camp. I think this is a rail car that shows you maybe what it was like to come in on a rail car maybe. But I think they were just empty rail cars, so I don't know what this rail car is. I don't know what it can show, but I guess we'll go look. There's words here on the side so I can look at the words. Mass deportation. 1930, they started Soviet mass deportation from the territory of Ukraine, victimizing the wealth of Palestine and so called well lost in the Persian. Uh, over 190,000 persons were forcefully displaced. You see that over 190,000 persons were forcefully displaced. During the Nazi occupation, at least 345,000 Jews from the western Ukraine were deported to death camps. Auschwitz. About two minutes of forced laborers fell victims of deportation. Mm -hmm. 1941, so they took everybody, peasants, Catholics, Greeks, and deportations. Over 203,000 people fell victims to mass deportation in the land. Okay. And then this is... Oh, this would just be full of bags. Because then they'd go through their bags. I remember watching a video where they just kind of threw the bags in the middle and then they'd go through them and anything that was salvageable, they'd keep anything that was jewelry, gems, money, whatever. Paintings would be uh, pulled out as well. And then open now. Okay, thank you. Cattle wagon. Cattle wagon, part of the museum display about the post war Soviet, the basis of the display of its original made 1951, the wagon manufacturer from the Germany Republic that they has stayed until 1991. In 2019, the wagon transferred into a museum exhibition. They would often carry cattle in such freight wagons that is why they were known as cattle wagons or cow wagons. One wagon could place some 20 persons or more. On the left and the right from the sides were three little bunk beds. In the winter time, the wagon was also had cast iron stove. Eek. And there's a tower. And it looks like there's towers every couple of feet, huh? Anyway, I gotta go buy a ticket. I'll be back. Okay, I got my ticket. The main exhibition of the Territorial Museum describes mass violence in the mid 20th century. The museum is built on the ruins of the ashes. Real people telling about their experiences from before, during the Second World War. Huh, okay. Well, this is Barracks One. Um, not sensing a threat. Let's try to stay out of the light here. You know, and I remember this in Krakow too. They just said, okay, we're just going to kind of put you over here. And then that was fine. Everybody just kind of went along with it. And then, then they said, okay, well, we're going to kind of build a wall around you. And they kind of went along with it. And, and then before too long, it was too late. You... You were stuck inside, you couldn't get out. There were guards, there were... Okay. 
not sensing a threat, okay. So I think this is the... I'm sorry, I need to turn off the screen, sorry. Oh, okay. The screen? Uh, yeah, we have oh, a, with, with a display. Okay. Yeah. And so Even these, me. these are the voices of this one. So if I wanted to hear him, I could hear. I just put this yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, this man speaks uh, Polish, uh, oh. and uh, almost all of our witnesses speaks Ukrainian because they are they Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Yeah. But but we have translation here. We have some books with with translation. Yeah. Okay. So okay. You, you can read. It. And this barrack. This was not a barracks. This was a. And did the German people live here? The German Nazi? Um, do you mean, is this original? Or? This, yeah, this building, because it ah, looks no, really it, nice. It's, it's, it's not original. Of okay. Course, yeah, because it's too, it's too more. Right. Original. Hmm. So what is this room? Somebody's house? Uh, yeah, actually, it's it's a typical uh, Lviv apartment or Western Ukrainian okay. apartment. Yeah, uh, before the Second World War. So this is where somebody might live before yeah, yeah, before the occupation, before, before the ghetto. Yeah. Okay. Before the war, before before the occupation. Okay. And then they were moved to the barracks. Yes. Yes, and the barracks are down this way. Okay. Thank you. Is there volume? Oh, it's him. No, no, it's, it's not him. It's uh, Iron Vice. Okay. And this is Sarah Stockhouse. Uh, we have another story in another room, so you can... Discuss. The what? Yeah, here we have, for example, uh, the room about the uh, start of the Second World War. Okay. And here we have uh, nine stories about, about the start. And this is all Ukrainian, too? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, but so we have also this translation. Also. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. And then what are these rooms? Oh, this is after they got occupied and yeah, taken it's, it's out after, of their... it's after Soviet occupation. It's about, um, in Ukrainian, we have uh, Persian Soviet, like uh -huh. ter term, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's about, and we have some chronologies about uh, deportation, about arrests. Right. First, the rest of the Okay. And then what are these? It's just, oh, this is the actual barracks. Yeah, yeah. It's actually about that separation. Gotcha. And so, how many people would be on a bunk? Two or three? Um, actually, three, yeah, because we have this three. three okay. Shells. And uh, uh, here, by the way, here we have some, some original paintings. That, oh. uh, which in uh, Chernobyl uh, ghetto. Oh, so somebody wrote their name yeah, or their yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. And this is original? Yeah, this is original. Wow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I guess I'll start in the beginning. Yeah, if you have some questions, I have Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so you heard her say this is where they would live. This is a normal house of somebody here in Ukraine, in Lviv, um, before the occupation, before the, the war, before Nazi or anybody came through. And then this is, there's Lviv. And then, Guess I'm trying to figure out because those are cities. Yes. Um, huh, okay. War line. So is this when she entered and this when she is now, or? Yeah, nothing's in English, so that makes it tough. 
So this is when they took you. KGB Aberdeen is teams of people commissioned, commensurate in the internal affairs of the community where formed. We are living in constant fear, never knowing what can occur in NKVD, the most powerful U.S. agency, described the atmosphere of those Kurt Levine from Levine. Knock on the door at any time of day or night meant search or arrest. Eek. So they took their paintings, it looked like. There were paintings or pictures or a violin or something. Anything that was of value, I think. Can you read that? The camp had been one of the largest centers of mass killings in the region, especially after the liquidation of Belzig Death Camp. As soon as several hundreds of the Jews were executed. Strict regime prevailed the camp. Anyone suspected? I don't know. Get over here so I can read it. Publicly executed. How to convey what a person feels before the eyes of death? God is so. This is their orchestra that he organized and played for the German soldiers. Man, anything you could do to keep yourself useful, I guess, huh? Yeah, the camp orchestra at 1943. Camp orchestra near the cattle shed, 1943, source state archive, Lviv. Krakow, I mean, there was like three people per bunk, I think. They were a little wider than this, but there were three people per, per bed. And I can't read it, but... Six million local Jews fell victim to the Holocaust. Less than one third of them were killed in Belzec and Sober death camps in the Auschwitz concentration camp. The rest were shot in ditches or ravines. So one third of them, so a third of, that'd be five, 500,000, so 550,000. Um, were killed in death camps. So that means that like one point something million were shot in ditches and ravines and just at least 24,000 Romans were killed in the territory of Ukraine. Over five million Red Army soldiers were taken prisoner by Germans during the war. 
670 villages and towns were burned to the ground during punitive expedition against the Nazi resistance. More than 2.4 million forced workers from Ukraine were deported to Germany. I can't even imagine. She was asked to hide them during the war. My father hid them behind these icons. During Holocaust, my father. Hmm. I did not judge for each person faced the dilemma of supporting of the resistance. Being smaller and more local reality of the situation. Tens of thousands of people participated in anti Nazi resistance. They would kill occupation administration. The fact that Nazi officials were living in And this is that shoe place, solid. And they work there. It was like I said earlier, it's like a Shawshank Redemption, but it was a solid shoe company.
makes me curious to the back of the right side turn in your former homes. That's terrible too. so many photographs here. Who's on there? The purpose of them here. Every photo is priceless. It exists beyond time telling the story. This is barracks too. You know how tragic
Just this way. Either way. Oh, mask? Okay. Yeah, but which, which way? This way? Not that way. Okay. Okay, everybody. Thanks for coming along. <laughs>